My name is Ali Dua, uh, founder and director of the organization called LIFA. It's an abbreviation, but it's light of hope for Africa. We are doing advocacy to uh, migrants, especially Malawians, here in South Africa and abroad. Yeah, when we say advocacy, it's more or less like uh, speaking <coughs> to the people who are speechless, who are like, uh, who are being fringed by the rights and maybe doesn't know where to go and what to do at a particular moment when things happen in their life in daily basis. Uh, we are mainly interested in Malawian workers. Yeah, do you only deal with Malawian workers or you deal with different migrants? Uh, it depends because in case the issue is affecting both nationalities so we cannot isolate them. We always save them at once. Okay, then let's talk about labor matters. Do you also hang those? Yeah, we do. Uh, we do. What kind of challenges do migrant workers bring to you? There are a number of challenges, but the, I mean the most problem that we encounter it's uh, uh, I should say information. Uh, uh, like I should say Malawians, they don't know their rules and and the laws. How does it work? And what what does it mean when you say uh, uh, rights? as a worker they doesn't know what to do or they don't know what is it all about okay so how do you then try and make sure that they get to understand this do you hold meetings with them do you give them some written text do you refer them to people who know actually it's a challenge because uh, since the day one that they, that they arrived in the country they just jumped into uh, the labor uh, issues itself so it's a bit hard like to arrange and also maybe bring them together and then tell them what is it all about. But as organization, we are trying to meet them in different avenues so that they should understand their position as uh, human beings and also as workers. But it's really a challenge. So how does this lack of knowledge, especially on labor matters, affect them individually? Yeah, bottom line, uh, uh, when they come into South Africa, they are not... Uh, like they don't have document they're not documented so when they are not document documented it comes a problem for them to come out and then claim their problem that they are encountered they just seek and hide and then make sure that they are disappear even if somebody is killing them they can't come out because they fear of being arrested and sent back to malawi okay and then there are issues of exploitation at work how prevalent is that with malawi and uh migrants and these other migrants that you deal with it is really a challenge uh, if you so-called uh, 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 being violated whatsoever Malawians are on the top most uh, if i tell you now if you go to each and every shop wherever you go whatever you name it will be it a mall be it uh, whatever whatever you find a malawian in there he's working from monday to monday he's working even sunday he doesn't even know that times are limited for work. He doesn't even know that he need to claim his salary. He doesn't know that if he's not paid or if he's knowing extra, he's going to get uh, extra money, which is a bonus or something else. He doesn't know that. He's just there to work and work and work. If he's in an industrial side, they are being uh, hot, like for the rest of their life. They are not even given time to go out and buy stuff. They are not even given time to buy airtime and call home, say hello to their relatives. They are not, especially in the Chinese communities, they are the ones exploiting Malawians in, in particular. Um, in what sectors exactly do Malawian workers work? They are everywhere. Wherever you think of somebody to be working for, they are there. Be it high class, low class, wherever Malawians are there. And are they all facing the same problem of exploitation? No, it might be the same, depending on what kind of the job they're, they're, they're doing. They're, they're in, in different uh, uh, classes. Okay. Uh, you've already spoken about them not being given time off, not being given uh, a break at work. What other form of exploitation do they go through? Does it also extend to salaries that they earn? Do they earn enough? The money is not that enough. That's why they're failing to go back home. They're stuck here. But if you look at them, when we ask them, why, do you, why did you come to South Africa? They tell you, I had a plan. And I wanted to buy maybe equipment because most of them are, they are skilled. So they normally come just to plan and buy maybe equipment. Some of the carpenters, the engineers, their drivers, they are whosoever that you, you name it. But since they are stuck, 
now they, are, they have got no choice. They go for anything that they see on the table. But at the end, they have got even no choice also to claim about the money that they are supposed to be paid. So it's now it's like stagnant in the process. Uh, have you tried to maybe mitigate or litigate uh, on their behalf? That's why Alifa is coming in. But as I told you, it's a challenge. But, you know, it's, it's, it's going like a snail, right? Whereby you move slowly, slowly, and you carry something which is heavy. But you end, I mean, at the end, you reach your destination. Yeah. So we're getting there. And how difficult or easy is it for you to organize these people? Because there is this kind of widespread exploitation going on. You are trying to help them. Is it easy for you to try and group them together in, an, in your organization to try and then litigate on their favor from one point of view? There is a problem when it comes to, to, to mobilization, right? Uh, the issue is about... Uh, uh, our, our previous organization that has been in, 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 in operations, they have been misusing, they have been uh, ill-treating them whenever they have given them a chance for them to come in and maybe meet with them and all that. Sometimes they tell them maybe we will give you transport money. When they come there, they tell them, no, we don't have money and uh, maybe next time, right? So they can count for the period that they've been spent without being given such kind of promises. And uh, literally, they found that they only get empty promises from the organizers. Now, it has turned a bad image for them to participate in such <laughs> events. So when you tell them, now they start counting, are you going to give us transport? Are you going to give us a cup of tea? So if you don't have to give them, then they're not coming. But for us, we are using a mechanism whereby we are using uh, the already uh, organized groups like churches, masjid, right? Uh, soccer teams and all that whereby we just jump into and tell them guys okay are you here you're doing what okay so okay, okay we've got time i mean some of you ways that we need to talk to talk to you so they glass and then they hear us does it become easier then from that uh new initiative it is coming at least easy but it's a process so you know process is gradual but we hope we we'll win uh, and then there's a problem generally with the malawian migrants here of language do you think this also contributes to them being exploited because many of them especially those that work at spaza shops those that work at these small shops in china city cannot express themselves especially in the english language do you think this contributes to them being exploited no um when some sorry when somebody is in a problem it doesn't matter you to know your language right i can give you a very good example if you have been uh, close to chinese Chinese doesn't speak English, but how do they run shops? How do they manage their business? Language doesn't matter. What matters is you to know yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? What is it all about? You yourself. So that's the problem, of course. But we are trying as an organization to inform or to let them aware about their rights and stuff. So, yes, it's a process. And then when it comes to unfair dismissal at work, how prevalent is that again with them? Yeah, it is a challenge, but now since we are working with, uh, we are in the process of working with African Diaspora Forum, whereby we are also linked to labor, uh, what you call it, um, uh, CCMA, where they are kind of coming and tell us what is it all about when we say laws at, at, at work. So okay. we're getting more from these institutions. And then there is a Malawian out there who is being exploited. There is a Malawian out there who needs to get some more information about his rights uh, or her rights. Uh, there is another migrant worker out there who wants to get in touch with your organization. How do they contact you? Yes, uh, the door is open for us. We always operate 24-7. We are in social media. We are everywhere, right? If they, wants, if they want us to give them a help, a hand, they can call us immediately. It's 078-748-0094. They'll talk to me, Ali. Then we know where, where to take them, how to handle the issues. And don't hesitate. Come forward. Guys, time is now. Thank you. Okay. And finally, what will be your last words in as far as migrant workers and their challenges they face here is concerned? It is really a challenge. And uh, 
to us as organization, we are trying to link up with government uh, entities so that they should also give us a hand to, 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 to aware our communities why is it important like communities to work hand in hand with maybe police, to work hand in hand with even other government uh, 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 entities. It's really good for us. Don't hide issues. Don't disappear yourself when you have a problem. Come out and then voice out, especially the ones that are the victim of this issue that we are talking of, uh, all the exploitation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.